on the Lazy Geckos. We take you on a sailboat wine tasting, along with showing you a crazy mooring field we stayed at so we could get some work done. We had a little emergency, and we also went through our AIS system. and showed you some of the beautiful scenery we've been treated to during our journey south. Before leaving No Name Harbor, we wanted to visit the lighthouse. This thing was about a mile from us. It was super cool. was out, which allowed us to take a few minutes to relax. If you ever have the chance to visit No Name, make sure you get off the boat and explore the surrounding area. A lighthouse, lovely scenery, a sweet restaurant, and tons of paths to explore. Why wouldn't you? Reese loves exploring, so this place was perfect. We had a great time at No Name Harbor. It should be about a seven and a half hour trip today, as long as we can average over five knots. We left No Name Harbor, went offshore, and cruised south for the Keys. We have tons of friends in the Bahamas that are battling bad weather constantly, so we figured why not head for the islands just south of us. South we go, headed for some fun in the sun. Let's pack a bag and follow the sun. Kick off our shoes and have some fun. Get ready, get set, let's go. If we never go, we'll never know. Cause you and I, oh yeah, we could fly so high. We just got to Key Largo last night. I want to say hi. <laughs> and uh, it was a really good day. I think it was about eight and a half hours. We thought, we estimated about seven and a half, turned out to be eight and a half, probably because we had to stop in the middle and we added some oil to the engine. But it was gorgeous day. The water looked like glass. We pulled into Key Largo, which is right behind me. Hence why I have the camera this way. So you can see. We planned to stay there for a couple days. We, there were some things we wanted to see and do, but um, looking at the weather more closely, we started to realize that the winds were picking up. They were supposed to pick up to 35 knots coming from the east, so we had no coverage. We weren't protected at all. 
so kind of last minute we decided to get out of here this guy decided but good thing I got my morning workout in so I'm happy today's a good day we're going, we're going about 24 miles today uh, we're on a beam reach right now the winds blowing about 20 uh, we only have our jib out we have it reefed and we're moving it between five and yeah five seven it's kind of jumping all over. yeah so that's good we, as long as we stay above five that's what we care about you know so we could put the main up we had the main up a lot yesterday um, but we don't need to right now do you know the name of the anchorage or no, i think it's like indian key under a bridge and then there's some protected anchorages on that side from the east i'm just watching for crab pots they're unbelievable out wow. here yeah you will they pop up on you too, man. Only, you're only moving five knots, and you'll look away and look back, and there'll be a crab pot there. You don't want to hit one and get it tangled up in your prop. Kind of cool that we were just very last minute in our decision. Usually it takes us a couple days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are healing. <laughs> there it goes. So something that I learned and I wanted to share with you guys from my amazing sailor husband. Yeah. You are. You're incredible. The jib. The jib sheet comes off the jib, as you can see right there, and it goes down to a block, but it slides back and forth, and you can you can put it more forward or more aft on the boat, and it basically brings this line, the jib sheet, to a different point. So if we were pinching into the wind, we would put that traveler really far forward so we could pull that jib really tight um, to get it real tight towards the boat. And if we were, like right now it's about medium, and then if we were running down wind, we would bring it further back and let that jib balloon out. I've been looking for different ways to kind of come up with room on the boat. And one of my things is I like soda water or sparkling water, um, especially when I drink my vodka. So that takes up a lot of space because usually the soda water bottles are this size and you need much more than one. So I I uh, got an idea from a friend of ours about the soda stream and it's been awesome. Basically you just take your water, which now we're making water on the boat from the ocean, which is cool, and you fill it up here and then you put it in there, make sure it's tight. And now I have my soda water which is this is awesome so it's already cool because I have fresh water in the fridge cooling and I just add it in here and then I fizz it it's been wonderful I suggest you guys get it and it's low calories for all you women that like to drink it's really skinny I try to get the smallest version they do have larger versions but for us we take it and we stow it right here in our liquor cabinet it goes right there right in front of my blender and it takes up, even though you have this, it takes up a lot less room than 10 of these bottles, which I need a lot more than that. And it's very sad when I run out of soda water. We're stopped at this little random anchorage. It's right between uh, in our Key Largo and Marathon. And we're kind of stuck here because the winds are picking up. So we read on Active Captain a little bit about it. There's nowhere to bring our dinghy and dock the dinghy, but during low tide, a sandbar appears and that's kind of what we're doing. Reese gets to explore and have fun. This little girl gets to run on a beach and that makes her very happy. And that makes mommy and daddy happy to get everybody off the boat. You can see our boat out there, kind of cool. We just took the dinghy in, we beached it, and we've been playing in the water. It's very nice. Dinghy problems. <laughs> dinghy has been stalling. I think the carburetor might be clogged up. Well, I think this jet right here was clogged. I'm basically cleaning the carb out, and uh, which is fairly simple. There's a little float in here. There's two jets in there, and you just clean it out with carb cleaner, and then usually you use compressed air or something like that. But I don't have any, so 
So I need to get the car cleaner out, which is going to be fun finding, I'm sure. I see you've been smoking crack again. Okay. Found it? It's on WD-40. Oh, I told you it was in there. Yeah. And then put it back together and hopefully it's good, but this jet was completely clogged. The little one. Carburetor cleaning machine, honey. Yeah, we do a lot more than that. That's right, I clean all kinds of little things. So I'm up here sitting on the bow. We were looking at Active Captain and somebody had reviewed it uh, that we were gonna go through what they called the um, crab pot gauntlet. I have Jeremiah in my ears talking. So what we do in that case is somebody comes up to the bow, we have our headsets on and we talk to each other. Okay, go to the, you have one on the port, you have one on the starboard, go to the starboard, whatever it might be. And uh, that way we can safely get through it without any problems. It's kind of nice when you're not single handling to be able to have somebody do that with. However, you have to take every active captain's review with a grain of salt because somebody's opinion might not be yours and we really didn't see any crab pots. So what we're thinking is she came in through the channel, turned off into one of those line, of, a line of them, and that was her version of, you know, something crazy. My wonderful husband is going to put the jib out and I am parked on the dinghy and I'm gonna try to get some footage of it for you guys. Are you ready, honey? Oh, he's not ready. We're going through a, a shallow area, so we're gonna get around that. Do you wanna say hi, honey? <laughs> time on the Lazy Geckos. We weigh anchor and continue sailing. We arrive in Marathon, Florida where we grab a mooring ball. That's Marty Boogie Harbor and it's time for the cruiser's net. We get a few to-do items knocked off the list before we get ready to continue our journey towards the lower keys, dry tortugas, and more. Check out how you can be part of the fun by becoming a patron. Remember, Vimeo viewers get even more fun, so check it out.